and welcome to the Sheet Metal Tria Trade. Uh, today I'm going to walk you through some of the tools and the material and uh, kind of a how-to video on how to build this wonderful project that we're going to try. So uh, first things first, make sure that you are wearing your safety glasses and you're wearing some gloves. We always want to make sure that we have these because we do have sharp edges and we're going to cut some metal and we might have some pieces of metal fly around. So make sure your safety glasses are on and we'll start there. Okay. So some of the things that you're going to need to complete this project are, we will need a drill with a 1 8 drill bit. We will also need a tape measure or some sort of a measuring device. You will have received in your kit a folding bar. That's what this is. Uh, either one of these or maybe two of them. So we've got reds, greens, and yellows. These are aviation snips and these are what we're going to use to actually cut our metal. You will also need a pop riveter, which is here, and then of course, your metal. So some extra tools that you might need for this project um, would be a combination square, a hammer, and a scratch roll. So the first thing we need to do is lay out our pattern on our metal. So I'm going to be using a marker and a tape measurer. Easiest way to do this would be to bring it near the edge of the tape. So I'm going to measure a half inch from this side and a half inch on this side. This is where a combination square be very helpful. Clearly mark that side. Clearly mark that side. So I've gone ahead and I've done some other measurements. I've measured a quarter inch off of this side, a quarter inch off of this side, and I've also measured center of my piece, which is right around that two inch mark. So center is here, all the way to the other side. Center is here, quarter inch from that edge, quarter inch from that edge. Now I will draw a straight line. So I've laid out my pattern but I also need to cut some of these pieces out. So I'm going to shade them in with my marker or just by adding an X. So I want to get rid of this, this, and this. On the other side, I wanna do the opposite. So I'll get rid of this one, but I'm also still gonna get rid of this and this. So now we've cut out our inside pattern. And you might want to write inside on one, like so. Also, I've taken about a 30 degree angle off of here, about, I don't know, an eighth of an inch, just right here on each one of these corners. And that will make it just a little easier when we go to fold. So now that we've actually cut out our pattern and it is prepared, we're going to make a few notches and then we're going to begin to fold our project. So we're going to make a couple of notches to make this just a little bit easier and we're going to relieve some more edges. So on the bottom, I'm going to just take off just a little bit on an angle and this will make it so that when we fold it over, it'll follow the shape of the bottom of the canoe just a little bit better. Remember, always wear gloves when you're doing this. Also, I'm going to make just a little notch right here on my line, not much. And I'll do the same on the other side. I forgot we're gonna do a little notch here as well a little notch here and then we'll turn it around and do the exact same thing a little notch here 
and a little notch here. Now I can fold, and when I'm folding, I wanna make sure I use a small side here, but don't put it in all the way, otherwise it'll go too far. And we just wanna go to the line like so. So now that we're ready to fold, I'm going to fold just on this side of the line. So I put my piece of metal in just to this side, and I'm going to put some pressure on the metal, and I'm gonna slowly pry up. Keeping full pressure on the metal, and then just fold all the way over. If you do not have enough hand pressure, to squish the metal flat, you can take a hammer or a wooden mallet and you can go ahead and bang along the top. Now we will fold the ends. Again, just on this side of that line. But only take it up to about there. You can take it to 90 degrees or a little less, but not too far. Again, just behind the line, about there, or you can go just a little bit more to 90. So now we're gonna begin our fold. Remember we made these notches here and here. The big thing is not to fold too quickly, too fast. So I'm going to go here. I'm gonna just kink it just a bit just like so. And I'm gonna go to the other side and do the same. Give it just a little bit of a kink. Okay. And then I wanna slowly begin to fold up the corners. Okay, not too much, all at once. Slowly it will start to take shape. Just take your time with this. There's no need to rush it. You got a full class to kinda do this anyway. Okay? And remember, we're not trying to touch these sides, just touch the end, because we're trying to make a canoe. And remember, we have to have a place to sit inside that canoe, so make sure it all comes up. Once you have come to the end like that, just give this a quick roll over with your fingers, and that should hold it. And we'll go to the other side and do the same. And be careful. If you do kink just a little bit, like right here, we're gonna go ahead and fix that now before we finish rolling. So we've got a little kink here, and we don't want it to kink too bad there. So we're gonna take our hammer, and we're gonna use the butt end of the hammer, and holding our hammer like this, I want to be able to hit like this. And that's what I'm going to use to take out that little kink. It doesn't take much pressure, we can kind of take care of it a little bit like that. And remember, once we have it together, just fold over. And that should hold. So now we're going to get ready for our rivets. We need to put one rivet right here. Now, there's a couple of ways that we can do this. We can get a friend to come and help us and we can use pliers and see I've put tape on these pliers here. And this is a regular set of pliers just like this. Or I can take some needle nose pliers like this. And what we're just trying to do is hold this piece together right here while we drill into here. So using a drill with metal is a little different than drilling into wood. We want to be very careful how we do this. Uh, again, using proper drill safety, I always grip my drill here and I use my middle finger as my trigger finger. And then I can put my hand on top of the drill and I go like this. But in metal, we don't go like that. We give short bursts. And that helps us cut into the metal a lot easier. It'll also keep it from sliding around on you. Okay. So using a scratch awl, if I want, I can make a little mark right here 
where I need to put my drill. So about halfway in between is where I wanna go. And so I'm going to just put it there and just give it a quick tap with the hammer. That gives me a little mark. Now that gives me a place to start with my drill. So once again, when I'm drilling through, I don't want to drill through to the other side. I just want to go through this piece and this piece here. Don't go all the way through. So see, maybe made just a little bit of a mark, but I didn't go all the way through. So when putting in our rivet, we need to go through both layers and get to the inside. If you can see that. So once I have this together, I'm gonna wanna push it in as hard as I can. So I'm gonna maybe put my handle on here. And this can be just a one person job if you do it like this. Push and crimp. Push and crimp. And one more, it should pop. And that's why it's called a pop rivet. So we, we've finished our canoe here and you can still kind of move it a bit to try to get the shape if you want to kind of stretch it out. You can do that just fine. Um, if you want, you can lay these down just a little bit better using that trick that I showed you with the hammer. But again, only use the back end of the hammer, the handle part, just to give it some little taps. And you can work it down and you can get it to lay down just a little bit better. It doesn't hurt to take a file and maybe file some sharp edges that you might have, and that's okay too. And if you want to get a little fancier, you can take a piece of metal and put it across on the inside. You can tuck it up underneath here, and you can make a little bench seat to go in there, and that will kind of complete your canoe look. But this is your finished canoe.